Shalom, and welcome to Via Hafta Yisrael, a Hebrew phrase which means you shall love Israel. We hope you'll stay with us for the next 30 minutes as our teacher, Dr. Baruch, shares his expository teaching from the Bible. Dr. Baruch is the senior lecturer at the Zera Avraham Institute based in Israel. Although all courses are taught in Hebrew at the Institute, Dr. Baruch is pleased to share this weekly address in English. To find out more about our work in Israel, please visit us on the web at loveisrael.org. That's one word, loveisrael.org. Now, here's Baruch with today's lesson. In the passage that we're going to be studying today, we find the term Shabbat or the Sabbath day. Now, let's get a few things very clear. When we talk about Shabbat, many times people will say, are we supposed to keep the Shabbat? Understand today without a temple in Jerusalem, there cannot be Shabbat observance according to what the Bible demands. Why is that? Well, if you read sometime in the book of Numbers in chapter 28, you will find that on Shabbat, there was a requirement to offer up certain sacrifices at the temple. Obviously, without a temple, there's no altar in Jerusalem and no means to do that. And that tells us that Shabbat cannot be kept at our times. However, Shabbat still has significance. Let me tell you another error that people make in regard to the Sabbath day. They associate Shabbat as the day of worship. One ought not do that. When we look at the scripture, both in the Old Covenant and the New Covenant, we find that worship is something that should be done every day. In fact, the example that Judaism takes is found in the book of Daniel, where Daniel worshiped God three times a day. And that is why in an Orthodox synagogue, there are services every day, three times a day. And on Shabbat, there's even an additional service. So we ought not associate Shabbat as the day of worship. Every day, we should worship God. What is unique about Shabbat is this. What we find biblically associated with the Sabbath day is rest. There are certain things that are forbidden. But we need to remember two very important principles. Both of these are found in the book of Mark and chapter 2 at the end of that second chapter. Where we find that the word of God says, and it is Yeshua, that is Messiah Jesus who is speaking. When he says, man was not made for the Sabbath, but rather, Sabbath was made for man, meaning this. Shabbat was instituted for our well-being. It is a blessing. And then secondly, we see this. Also in that same passage, we find that Yeshua himself, he calls himself the Lord of Shabbat. How do we understand that? Well, when you look in the scripture, you will find that there is a relationship between Shabbat and the kingdom of God. In fact, we are going to begin chapter 14 of Luke's gospel. And we're going to see that Messiah is going to educate some of the leaders of Israel in regard to Shabbat, meaning when one understands properly the Sabbath day, this one's going to have a greater understanding of the kingdom of God. We also find out that Shabbat is not meant to be a burden, but Shabbat is a day of joy. There is an inherent relationship biblically between that concept of rest and joy and happiness. So Shabbat does not afflict us, rather, we find that Shabbat should be a delight. In fact, one of the ways that we talk about Shabbat is with the term oneg, which is a word which means of great delight. So Shabbat is a blessing. And we can still utilize Shabbat 
and understand the relevance of Shabbat and see how this day is a type of foretaste for the kingdom of God. As we study this 14th chapter of the book of Luke, we're going to learn more about how Shabbat and the kingdom of God are related. Take out your Bible and look with me to that location, the book of Luke and chapter 14. We're going to begin in verse 1 where it says, And it came about when he entered into the house of one of the rulers of the Pharisees on Shabbat. So right away we see that term Shabbat. And Messiah, he received an invitation. This, this leader of the Pharisees invited him to his home for Shabbat. Now, Shabbat, as I said, should be seen as a blessing. We need to have a proper understanding. So if you were to ask me, what is my objective in this message? It is to fulfill what Messiah taught us about Shabbat, that it is a good thing, that it is a blessing, and we need to understand it in the biblical terms. Unfortunately, we're going to see that these Pharisees, they did not. Now, it opens up this first verse that Messiah entered into the home of a certain Pharisee who was a leader of the Pharisees. He did so on Shabbat to do what? It says as we continue on in verse 1, to eat bread. But notice something else. It says there that there were those who were watching closely him. Now, the verb that's used here is indeed to watch someone with great, great concern. And what was that concern? Well, what we're going to see is this. The reason that Yeshua received that invitation was not because these Pharisees wanted to share fellowship with him and, and enjoy Shabbat together. That would have been a proper thing to do. But they had alternative motives. And what were these alternative motives? They wanted to entrap him. They wanted to shame him. They wanted to disgrace him. And they wanted to discredit him from anyone thinking that he was the Messiah. Keep reading. Look at what it says in verse 2. And behold... A certain man was there, and notice, with this disease called dropsy. Now, what is that? It is a swelling of a, a limb of one's body, and in this case, it was his hand swelled with water. And it just wasn't a minor swelling, but there would be a great deal of water there, and this would make it very painful very sore in other words this man was in discomfort now remember what i said to you there is a biblical relationship we're going to see this in this 14th chapter of luke between shabbat and the kingdom of god because we're going to see in a few weeks as we press on in this 14th chapter, that he is going to teach them about the fact how Shabbat and the kingdom are related. And the teaching is going to be this. It is because they did not understand Shabbat that they did not have the right understanding of the kingdom of God. And when you don't have the right understanding of Shabbat and the kingdom of God, you're not going to be prepared. You're not going to be emphasizing what you should. And you're going to be doing things that instead of having a kingdom implication to it, a kingdom emphasis, you are going to be, when you're not kingdom-minded, you are going to be earthly-minded. And that is never pleasing to God. So look again at our verse, verse, verse 2, where it says, And behold, a certain man was there with dropsy, being before him, meaning that he was there among them, but 
he was placed before Yeshua. And there was a reason for that. Look now to verse 3. And Yeshua answered. He said to, and notice who were there. Not just the Pharisees, but there's another group of people. Now, the term that's used here, many Bibles will say lawyers, and that's fine. But the word here is related to the Torah. These were experts in the law of God. So in this uh, Shabbat fellowship, we find that Yeshua was invited. There was also these experts of the law, experts in the Torah of Moses. And we see here that there were other Pharisees that come to this place, and they had a plan. They wanted to put this man who was in great pain, who had this disease, they wanted to see if Yeshua would, in their mind, violate the Shabbat and heal on that day. That is why Yeshua was invited. And therefore, look again at verse 3. And Yeshua answered, he said to the lawyers and the Pharisees, saying, is it lawful for the sake of Shabbat to heal? And it's very important that we see what is literally being said here. He asked all of this group, these experts in the Torah, these Pharisees, he asked them, is it lawful to heal on Shabbat? Now, literally, it doesn't say on Shabbat. If we're very, very precise, it said precise, it says, for the sake of Shabbat, on account of Shabbat. Why is that important? Because this tells us what Yeshua's objective is. He wants to show them and to teach them what Shabbat is about. Now, the Sabbath day is a day of, of restoration, meaning on Shabbat, Things are put into order. When you hear that term, Shabbat, what is that key biblical word that should come into our mind? The word is rest. In Hebrew, minucha. And rest just doesn't mean not doing anything, just, just acting leisurely. But this word rest, this word can also have to do with putting something, and here's the key in its proper location. And therefore, being placed in that proper location is a type of, of restoration. It is restoring someone to where they need to be and also to be placed in the proper condition. That is what Shabbat is about. This is the key aspect of the Sabbath day. And when is this going to be experienced in the fullness? Well, this restoration can be thought of as a kingdom restoration. We know that when we are in the kingdom of God, all things are going to be ordered by the will of God. He is going to be ruling with that rod of iron. In other words, the kingdom of God represents a total restoration to the will of God, the purposes of God, and we could summarize it by saying this. There is an inherent relationship between the kingdom of God and the order of God. And therefore, notice what Messiah says. He says in the middle of verse 3, if it is lawful for the sake of Shabbat to heal, now, these were experts in the law of God. These were the Pharisees. And what he's going to do is to show throughout this 14th chapter that these so-called leaders, these so-called experts, they didn't understand Shabbat. They were wrong about their views concerning the Sabbath day. And therefore, they did not understand the kingdom of God. They did not have a kingdom emphasis in their life. But, but Messiah, he did. And he is going to, particularly on Shabbat, do a healing to show and to teach 
the proper understanding of Shabbat. Shabbat is about a kingdom restoration, putting things in the order of God. So he asked them a question. Is it lawful to heal for the sake of Shabbat? And notice they, verse 4, but they were silent. And I would point out that, that, that conjunction. The, Hebrew, the Greek word day, which means in conflict. So their lack of understanding, their silence showed that they were in conflict with the true purposes of Shabbat. And it says, after they were silent, meaning they refused to answer, notice what happened. And taking, meaning taking this one who had this disease, this dropsy, what did he do? Notice what the text says. After taking this one, he healed him. And what else? He, he sent him away. He, he sent him on his own. Now, he was only there as this prop, as a way of entrapping Yeshua. That's what their, their purposes were in order to discredit him. What did Messiah do? He healed him. Notice it says, after taking him, bringing him to him, he healed him, and then he sent him away. Look now to verse 5. And he answered, this is Yeshua. He answered to them. He said, which one of you, a donkey or an ox, into a pit having fell. So one, he asks these individuals, which one of you having a donkey or an ox that, that would fall into a pit? He says, would you not immediately, would you not raise him out on the Sabbath day? Now, he's speaking about something that they should have known. And that is the Shabbat was never given in order to afflict us, harm us, or be a burden to us. The Shabbat is a blessing. That's why Messiah taught earlier, and I'll go back to Mark chapter 2, where he says, Shabbat was made for man, meaning for our interest, for our blessing, for us because it's a day of restoration. And therefore, what he's saying should have been obvious. And this is how they would naturally behave. If one of these individuals, if one of their animals, whether it be a donkey or an ox, would fall into a pit, he says, do you not immediately raise him out of it? Why? Well, having fallen, he could have been injured. He would be suffering. And a principle of Shabbat is this. Shabbat is not for suffering. It is a day of joy, a day of gladness, a day of delight. Why? Because we should understand Shabbat as a foretaste to a kingdom experience. And that's why, for example, Jewish law doesn't mean it's right, but we can learn some wonderful things from it. And that is, Jewish law requires you to eat three meals. Why? We shouldn't be hungry on Shabbat. And that's why if you've ever been in Israel, you'll find beginning on, on Wednesday and Thursday and Friday, people will come up and ask for tzedakah le Shabbat. That is, give me some, some charity. Give me a little bit of money so that I can keep the Shabbat. What does that mean? Buy all that I need, the food that I need, so that I too can have these three meals. Why? Because eating three meals are satisfying. And Shabbat relates to satisfaction. What type of satisfaction? It's a foretaste of kingdom sang sang satisfaction. So it's about being full, being whole, and again, we're talking about this type of restoration. So he says to them, 
Which one from you, having a, a donkey or an ox that should fall into a pit? And does he not immediately raise him up on the Sabbath day? And notice how verse 6 ends. And it says, and they were not. Now, most Bibles will say they were not able. But literally, what it says is, they were not strong. They were not strong in knowing the truth of God, knowing the revelation of God in his word through the Holy Scriptures. So they were not able to, to counter him in regard to these things. In other words, he left them speechless. And you know what else? They were not successful in accomplishing their objective. Why? Learn a very important principle. You will never be successful in accomplishing your objectives. And if you should accomplish them, it's not going to produce the desired results. Many times people work for something very diligently and they get it and it doesn't satisfy. It doesn't fill that need, that desire as they thought it would. In fact, it can leave them empty. Why? It is only when we do the will of God that we fulfill not our desires, but his desires. Then and only then are we going to experience that fullness, that true satisfaction, that we're going to have joy. In other words, Joy comes from doing the will of God. I shared with you many times, there is this very well-known Hebrew word, everyone knows it, this word shalom. And many people say, well, shalom means peace. Well, not an earthly peace, but shalom is the satisfaction, the joy, that feeling of contentment that comes from fulfilling the will of God. There is a close relationship. There is a cause and effect relationship between doing the will of God and experiencing shalom, that peace and contentment. As Paul says, that peace that passes all understanding and to know the joy of being truly contented. Where do we find that? In God's will. And Shabbat is a day of restoration. Why is that? Well, here's what normally happens to individuals. As we live our life throughout the week, we find that the, the stresses and the obligations and the pressures and such of this world can frequently move us away from a godly way of thinking. We, we, we deal with the things of the world, food and clothing and shelter and all of our earthly obligations. And sometimes we lose track of the purposes of God. And therefore, God, remember what Messiah taught at the end of, of, Math, of Mark chapter 2, that man was not made for Shabbat, but rather Shabbat was made for man, meaning this. Shabbat is a blessing. God created it for a reason. And that reason is to bring about restoration, a spiritual restoration. So what is Shabbat observance? Well, minimally, it's this. It's that we push out the things of this world. Now, I especially like Shabbat. Why? Don't mess with my phone or computers and such. It's a time that we turn off the world and we focus on God. Certainly, yes, we worship God like we should worship him every day. Pray without ceasing, Paul commands us. But we see something else. We approach God uniquely in that, that spirit of rest. We, we focus on him and his word rather than the things of this world. In fact, Shabbat is when we say no to the things of this world in order that we can concentrate on the things of God. And that has a sanctifying influence in our life. And therefore, Shabbat, even though we're not under the law, 
and we cannot keep Shabbat as the Word of God demands, we can still utilize Shabbat as a blessing. Remember, it is so important that we focus in on the fact that Yeshua said that He is the Lord of Shabbat, meaning He is the Lord of that day. And Shabbat relates to the kingdom, therefore He's the Lord or the King of that kingdom. It says a lot about who he is in regard to that phrase, the Lord of Shabbat. And therefore, because he linked himself with Shabbat, we should take seriously Shabbat and understand that that Messiah is still willing to work. It is still a blessing and that we can find that restoration and, and what causes us to lose that kingdom mindset throughout the week. On Shabbat, we can refocus. We can experience that, that satisfaction of the kingdom, that foretaste, so that we are ready on the first day of that week to demonstrate a kingdom character. Shabbat has that restoring, that renewing, that empowering effect when we utilize it for the things of God. So we're going to see as we continue this 14th chapter of Luke's gospel, we're going to see what Messiah says about Shabbat and also about the kingdom of God. Shabbat is a powerful day in order that we can experience God's rejuvenating, renewing, restoring work in our life. Value that. Now, again, we can't observe the Shabbat as Moses commanded without a temple and such. But we can do a wise thing. And what is that? To press out on the seventh day and realize we don't see Shabbat as a principle. Choose one day of worship. The Bible says that God sanctified the seventh day, not one day a week you choose, but specifically the seventh day in order that the Spirit of God can sanctify us on that day that He sanctified and worked a change in our life, a change of spiritual restoration, a spiritual renewal, so that we can have a pleasing testimony to God and an influential testimony in the lives of other people. That's what we're called to do. Shabbat is a good day. Utilize it for the glory of God, and for your own spiritual growth. Well, we hope you will benefit from today's message and share it with others. Please plan to join us each week at this time and on this channel for our broadcast of loveisrael.org. Again, to find out more about us, please visit our website, loveisrael.org. There you will find articles and numerous other lectures by Baruch. These teachings are in video form may download them or watch them in streaming video. Until next week, may the Lord bless you in our Messiah Yeshua, that is, Jesus, as you walk with Him. Shalom from Israel.